it. There we go. So we're back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so let's keep going. So what does the nephron do? I spoke about production of filtrate, reabsorption of nutrients in the proximal convoluted tubule, reabsorption of water in the collecting duct and distal convoluted tubule. Uh, the glomerulus, as I said, is a, a knot of interconnected capillaries contained in the Bowman's capsule. And you have an arterial coming into the glomerulus and uh, an artery leaving, an arterial leaving the glomerulus. So if you look at a fine image, a picture of the glomerulus, you can see that there's the afferent arterial which brings blood into the glomerulus. There's the efferent arterial, which takes blood out of the glomerulus. So the uh, glomerular blood system has uh, a whole series of pores that allows uh, basically everything to go through except protein. So sodium, chloride, calcium, magnesium, bicarbonate, glucose, amino acids. So the waste of uric acid and so on, and urea. So this is the first formation of filtrate, and it's regulated by the macula densa and the juxta glomerular cells in the juxta glomerular apparatus. Notice that's right in between the two arterioles. Okay. So here you have blood vessels in the glomerulus. Uh, here do you have uh, these fine pores in the blood vessel supply of the glomerulus and these various pores and are going to regulate what filters out and what stays in the blood. So uh, the capsular space, let's show you what a capsular space is right in here. It's a capsular space, so the filtrate will end up here. The renal corpuscle has uh, mechanical holes of certain sizes that regulate what is uh, put into the filtrate. Proteins stay in the blood vessels and the rest has to be uh, reabsorbed, okay? So let's, let's talk about this. So uh, these protocytes are, create, help create uh, slits, and uh, this is where the filtrate is formed. Once that filtrate gets into the convoluted tubule, I mentioned that it re reabsorbs nutrients, ions, protein are supposed to stay in the blood. Okay, so all of these uh, capillaries that are around the proximal convoluted tubule, uh, any and this reabsorption goes from tubule into blood. If you go from blood into tubule, that's called secretion. Okay, the loop of Henle has uh, the descending limb, which is permeable to water, and the ascending, which is impermeable to water and solutes. So we talked about that. So the distal convoluted tubule uh, secretes secrets secretes substances into the urine, absorbs sodium from the urine, and this juxtaglomerular apparatus releases renin, which is a, a substance that leads to uh, control of blood pressure. Renin is converted into angiotensin one and angiotensin two, and erythropoietin stimulates the production of red blood cells in the bone marrow. Uh, I take an angiotensin receptor blocker to help control my blood pressure. The collecting ducts receive urine. Uh, a minor calyx goes into a major calyx, then goes into the uh, renal pelvis. Uh, water can be re reabsorbed there, as well as ions can be uh, reabsorbed. Urine is to get rid of urea, creatinine, uric acid, and excess ions. 
Okay, I already mentioned filtration, reabsorption, and secretion. Let's go through them. So blood moves into the glomerulus. Glomerular filtration rate depends on that blood pressure. So what, as the filtrate forms uh, and leaves the glomerulus and goes into the proximal distal tubule, I mean the proximal convoluted tubule, that's the formation of filtrate. Uh, renin is released because the juxtaglomerular body apparatus is constantly monitoring blood pressure and renin is released and that's going to uh, raise the blood pressure increase blood volume and blood pressure and glomerular filtration rate returns to normal you have to have uh, a regulated homeostatic gfr and that's very important component of general homeostasis so as i mentioned 180 liters of filtrate is produced each day 70 times the plasma volume, which is around five to six liters. The proximal convoluted tubule is reabsorbing nutrients like glucose and amino acids, sodium, potassium, water, bicarbonate, magnesium, calcium, and so on is reabsorbed. So the proximal convoluted tubule will also secrete substances in the two tubular fluid. So that comes from uh, blood into tubule, okay? So these substances are put into the veins to return to the blood system. So the reabsorption of nutrients like glucose and uh, amino acids, sodium, magnesium, potassium, calcium, bicarbonate, uh, phosphates, Whatever is needed is returned to the uh, blood stream right here. The next step, you have the proximal convoluted tubule, uh, goes into the loop of Henle, water is reclaimed, uh, sodium is reabsorbed, potassium is reabsorbed, and uh, this, uh, as you take out water and you take out sodium and potassium, the urea concentration rises as fluid is lost. The distal convoluted tubule performs the final adjustment, but can secrete or reabsorb, uh, reabsorb sodium in exchange for potassium and hydrogen ions. And aldosterone is a home hormone from the, uh, the adrenal cortex, which increases sodium reabsorption which leads to greater absorption of water. Okay, there's another hormone secreted by the posterior pituitary called antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin. Okay, let's stop there. Let's see, well, how long has that been going on? So let's repeat this and then we'll stop. So antidiuretic hormone is secreted by the posterior pituitary. It regulates water loss and uh, the amount of water reabsorbed is gonna be determined by the uh, sodium that's re become reabsorbed. Okay, let's go back here and we'll stop recording for a moment.